Speaking at the Oceanology International 2008 conference in London, Lord John Brown said there was no shortage of normal hydrocarbon fuels, but they are having a devastating effect on the environment. We know that greenhouse gas emissions at or above current rates are very likely to produce further global warming and induce other changes in the global climate system during this century. Having worked in the oil industry for over 40 years, he's now focusing attention on alternative renewable energy sources. 700 times solar over 50 years translates to a compound growth rate of 14% a year, consistently applied, and that is important. By comparison, the latest International Energy Agency projection, often cited as a pessimistic study, predicts an annual growth rate in solar electricity of 17% out to 2030. He believes the real future lies in harnessing marine and tidal energy, which could have a real impact and provide a major energy source in the future. The UK Renewables Advisory Board estimates that marine energy has the potential to contribute up to 20% to Britain's electricity needs in the future. As with all renewables, ocean energy is ultimately derived from the effects of sunshine on our planet, surface, two-thirds of which is covered by water, and also from the gravitational pull of the moon. First, hydrostatic energy locked up in tides which can be exploited using the same principles as hydroelectric dams. Secondary, hydrokinetic energy, the energy contained in moving columns of water, in particular waves, currents, and tidal streams. It's also felt this type of water-based energy can have real advantages over other renewables. The force created by an ocean current travelling at 12 miles an hour is the same as wind blowing at 110 miles an hour. Large amounts of energy can therefore be captured using a relatively small footprint. The UN estimates that more than half of the world's population now lives within 200 kilometres of a coastline. That means marine power can be generated closer to where it's used. With 80 different marine energy projects being undertaken and a growing market for them, steps must be taken to harness this type of power. The challenge, as with all low carbon energy, will be to continue deploying these technologies quickly and at a scale in the years ahead. Doing so, will require an ironclad partnership between governments, business and scientists, policy makers setting the rules, investors deploying capital within those rules, and scientists and engineers researching and developing practical solutions. He also called for technical incentives to develop marine and tidal power to reduce its cost and make it cheaper and viable so it can become a major energy source of the future.